Hello, you crazy kids. I am Ben Sleva, and I'll be your host for the show this week. And I promise yeah, I won't bite. Last time, we did a great deal of walking around and a greater deal of stressing over whether we'd find the Sword of Kings or die in a heap at the bottom of an endless chasm at Stonehenge Base. Luckily, we survived to tell the tale, but this week, we have a shorter episode because we're only worrying about a library and a pit in the ground. But it's what's in that pit that will give us some incredible nightmares. And I'm talking about the twisted metal that doesn't include Sweet Tooth, a bunch of rubble that'll make us fumble over ourselves, a sharp jagged dude that may be tossed into a cycle bin because he's being too dang used. I'm talking, of course, about the Electro Spectre. Now that we've rescued the smartest minds in the game, it's our job to let them work on inventing the future of tech. We'll give them some space by backtracking all the way back to Onet. It's there we'll visit the library and find us a book to gift our new tend of friends. This book is all about overcoming shyness, a book that we could all use at one point in our lives. I read it when I was 27. Some read it when they're three. Regardless, it's our duty to get it. Head to the stack of shelves and tinker around for a bit. After no time at all, you'll find it and be ready to go back to Tender Village. Before you do, though, make sure you equip the Franklin badge to Paula and check that Jeff has the neutralizer in his inventory. March directly to the head boss and throw the book at him. He'll teach his fellow tendas some social skills. If you dance around the table and talk to that fella, you'll be offered another cup of tea, and it'll be our time once again to reflect on our journey. I'm not really sure what this tea officially represents, but if I know anything about time travel and whatnot, part of me thinks it's Ness from another timeline, maybe helping the true hero get that little bit of motivation they need to keep going. Maybe it's just because I'm a dreamer. Who knows? After the words of encouragement, you can begin to explore more Tenda Village. Around this corner, you'll find a rock talking to a nearby Tenda. He'll lift up the rock and reveal a rope ladder. Take it down and enter this week's boss dungeon. Stop! Before you go any further, I need to backtrack and refer to the third episode in this entire series. It was there that I mentioned that there were three mandatory grind spots in the game. The first was that Titanic Ant Cave. The second was at Master Barf's Fortress, where we fought the Foppies. Now is a third and final grind spot, the Fobby Slaughter Ground. You see, much like their counterparts, the Fobbies come in great hordes and go down like a bag of bricks. Take your time to fight them because they'll lead to some higher levels. But you know what? I got a bit ahead of myself, and for that, I'm embarrassed. Let's go back up a little bit and go over all the enemies you'll find in this dungeon. We have Conducting Spirits. Show him the sparks that fly when you smash him into tomorrow with physical attacks. Fobbies, like Foppy. This creature is not much of a problem and offers some nice experience boost. Hyper Spinning Robos. These metallic beings can keep you from using PSI skills. Smash it to bits. And Uncontrollable Spheres. A real troublemaker, sporting both PSI fire techniques and a deadly self-destruct sequence. Finish him last. <laughs> the Bobbies are mostly at the entrance area of the dungeon, so get to grinding out in the beginning to ensure the rest of the dungeon goes well. And since I've said Dungeon 81 times now, let's discuss the ins and outs of it. Even with this map, this dungeon can get tricky. There are a lot of ups and downs, so grab my hand and I will guide you. Once through the entrance, hug the left wall and take that first ladder, Ladder A. There is a rock you were told to speak to and also a super bomb that will come in handy later. Backtrack to Ladder A and again head to the surface. Hang to the left, skip that hole in the floor and take Ladder B. That will lead you to a cave. Then if you follow that ladder, you'll take C after grabbing an IQ capsule. Ladder C will take you to a dead end, but the dead end produces the Diadem of Kings, which is the third of four of Pooh's only equipable items, so you'll want to get that. Backtrack Ladder C and grab Ladder B. I know it's a lot of ground to cover, especially with all these enemies around, but that earlier Fobby battles will pay off. Once back at the top level, backtrack a bit and follow it up this time all the way around the loop to Ladder D. Ladder D will lead to a sub-level, which you need to follow all the way until it ends. You'll get a raw candy and a bottle of DX water. At the very end is Ladder F. Ladder F will come back to the top surface and to our boss. Skip the ladder in between, but don't talk to the boss until you walk all the way to the end and get the rabbit's foot. It is a great equip. Say goodbye to the Fobbies and say hello to this week's boss, the Electro Spectre. The Electro Spectre is our seventh year sanctuary guardian. The guidebook states that it's made from an unknown material not of this earth. According to Nintendo Power, the Electro Spectre is said to be comprised of the leftover remains of Gygus' army's arsenal thrown together as a makeshift superweapon. Hmm. Unlike most Sanctuary bosses, Electro Spectre does not have the normal Sanctuary Guardian theme. Instead, it shares its theme with the Kraken and Thunder and Storm. Electro Spectre attacks are strange because most of them are actually items used by Jeff. 
He starts with a PSI shield beta, but has no method of replenishing it. Some other attacks include use an electric shock attack, which does 60 to 180 damages to two targets. It's, it's comparable to PK Thunder beta. He also uses the neutralizer, which removes all shields, including his own. He uses Hungry HP Sucker, which takes one eighth of your max HP or 50 HP and hits the entire party. He also uses a shield killer, which removes shields from one target. Now, I mentioned this earlier, but you want to make sure that Paula has the uh, Franklin badge attached. Okay, keep her safe. On the first turn, have Jeff use his neutralizer to take down Electro Spectra's psychic shield. Use PSI Rocket, PSI Fire, and PSI Freeze, Bottle Rockets, or Bazooka, and PSI Starstorm. Just throw them all you got. Here are some tips. Shields are pretty terrible in this fight. The Spectro has two attacks that do nothing but remove them, and the Electro Shock attack hits through PSI Shields. If you don't have a neutralizer or a shield killer and don't want to waste your time with thunder spotty accuracy, it might be worth it to have bat it might be worth it to use bash with Paul and Pooh until it uses the neutralizer, removing its own shield. Once its shield is down, spamming PSI freeze is a decent strategy. A multi-bottle rocket won't kill it immediately, but can do up to 3,000 HP, and since Electro Spectre has 3,092 hit points, a couple of bash hits will most likely kill it. Make sure to keep your HP above 150 and be ready to heal to keep the battle alive. If you can manage to do this for a bit, you'll be in the clear and ready to start the last little bit of this game. That's right, we're almost in the end game now, and it's all about to get really, really weird. Next time we travel to an entire world below the ground and fight a bit of a schizophrenic threat, and I'm talking about the two-part boss, Carbon Dog and Diamond Dog. I'll see you then. Thanks again for watching the series. Still loving it over here on this end, and hopefully you are as well. Your homework this week is to tell me your thoughts on this boss. Is it some sort of creature created by Jeff in another timeline, and that's why it mimics his moves? Is it a Gygas secret weapon that's just misunderstood? What do you think? Go ahead and enjoy your week, and make sure to hug your parents if you have a chance. I will see you next week for our next boss, and like always, later days.